stories. Police officers told lie detector tests are not conclusive. A veteran rum producer says the local industry needs urgent assistance. And residents of White Hill St. Andrew want an update from government about their relocation. Welcome to Nation News for Friday, December 12, 2014. I'm Natasha Beckles. No matter where you are in the world, at home or abroad, Nation News keeps you connected with what's happening in Barbados. Through our website, video newscast, and online e-papers. So stay connected with Nation News. Your news, your time, your way. Director of Public Prosecutions Charles Leacock has urged police officers not to see lay detector tests as conclusive proof of guilt or innocence. Addressing the graduation ceremony for 24 Caribbean police officers who took part in a 10-week polygraph training course, he said what might be interpreted as telltale signs of a suspect's guilt might simply be signs of nervousness. So there must be a necessary balance and that is why the use of polygraph testing has become one of the tools available, but just one, as um, Executive Director Watson has just pointed out. It must form part of a holistic investigation. It is not an end in itself or a means in it. It's merely a means towards an end. Mr. Leacock also pointed out that some known criminals had beaten the polygraph test. He therefore advised the officers to see the test as just another important part of their investigations. The Barbados rum industry is on the verge of a crisis and remedial action needs to be taken very soon. This is according to Chairman of the West Indies Rum and Spirit Producers Association, Dr. Frank Ward, who says some local companies are laying off workers and cutting back production. He says that the crux of the matter is the failure of regional governments to resolve concerns about American subsidization of large producers in the U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. The rum industry veteran said this was compounded by the high cost and unsatisfactory quality of imported molasses, which is the key component of making rum. Residents of White Hill St. Andrew said they are still in the dark about their future, three weeks after the main road to their village collapsed during heavy rainfall. They say two churches have been forced to close their doors while small businesses in the area are losing business. The residents say they want Minister of Housing and Lands Dennis Kelman to tell them if they will be relocated after Transport and Works Minister Michael Ashley called for the road to be abandoned. CIBC First Caribbean International Bank says it has no plans of pulling out of the region. The assurance comes from CEO Rick Parkhill in light of the recent announcement by other Canadian banks that they were reducing their Caribbean operations. Many have speculated that they will eventually withdraw from the Caribbean. However, Mr. Parkhill told the nation his organization is not only staying put, but it plans to expand its services. He said the bank had reduced its workforce by around 10% in 2013, but the restructuring program was now complete. The Barbados Cancer Society has raised about $50,000 this year from its annual raffle. This was revealed on Thursday by President Dr. Dorothy Cook Johnson as she presented the grand prize of a 2014 Hyundai Accent to Omar Drakes. Dr. Cook Johnson said these funds form the backbone of the finances used to run the society. It will be at least another two months before the SV Ruth begins her life as an inter-island cargo vessel. The schooner, which made her maiden voyage from Browns Beach to the shallow draft last Saturday, will first have to undergo a number of tests and minor mechanical and electrical work. Project manager for the Caribbean Sail Cargo Initiative, Ian Dash, says the aim is to start carrying cargo from Barbados to Dominica and back from February. In sports, West Indies middle order batsman Marlon Samuels says he has found renewed confidence ahead of the first test match against South Africa, which begins next Wednesday. Samuels hit a double century to lift West Indies to a mammoth 508 in their first innings against a South African Invitational 11 on Thursday. Yes, I'm um, really looking forward to for the test match and hopefully last time I was here I scored a lot of runs and I um, hope that I can, can repeat that, that last trip to South Africa. And what do you think will be the key to, um, for the batsmen in particular, um, doing well against South Africa, well, starting with the first test at Centurion? Staying patient and back yourself and believe in your ability and taking your chance. Taking your chance for me is, 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 playing, is, is, is playing your shots and, and just going out there and being very confident and just back yourself. 
That match ended in a draw as heavy rain in Johannesburg forced the early abandonment of day three. The South Africans were 17 without loss at the end of the second day, having been dismissed for 125 in their first innings reply. And finally, an Australian prison officer is trying to create a Guinness World Record for the most cartoon characters tattooed on one person. 52-year-old Michael Baxter, who has 203 characters from The Simpsons tattooed on his back, reportedly spent 130 hours getting the work done. He says he wanted to get something which was unique, which nobody else had or would even think of getting. That's Nation News for Friday. For more, log on to nationnews.com as well as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Look out for the weekend buzz a little later and get your papers at newsstands. Do enjoy.